Hey, Lindsay here. Ah, hi Lindsay. I see you're here to make another one of your videos on indoctrinating kids about things that they really shouldn't be worried about at such a young age. Today I want to talk about if all kids are queer. Whoa, hang on a minute. We're so early into the video and you're already bringing up something which sounds very dodgy indeed. But do continue. So we know that kids are strange and kind of weird, but I think that all kids are actually just real queer. What you actually mean is that children are strange in the way that they are naive. They don't know what the world around them is like. They don't fully understand the world. How can you expect them to understand a topic as controversial as sexuality yet? So bear with me on this one. We might get a little academic here because I'm in the middle of my master's dissertation and I'm writing about this. So excuse all the academic talk. Yeah, I haven't heard anything academic as of yet. All I've heard so far is you talking about why you think children are queer, which is not the first thing you'd think about when you think about young children. But, okay, so basically I've been reading about this theory in queer theory and queer studies. <laughs> ah, yes, another queer slash gender studies student. Oh god, good to see that our tax dollars are being put to good use to keep you people in education. Do continue. Let us hear about the wonders of your academia. Called the theory of the queer child, which um, was basically coined by this lady, Catherine Bond Stockton, in this book, The Queer Child or Growing Sideways in the 20th Century. I know it's a really weird book cover, but whatever. And she talks about this theory in terms of metaphors in movies and books and all that cool stuff. Um, so that's this. She talks about theories in books, films, and television, and is using that in applied knowledge in an actual field of study. And you find this to be a credible source because, yeah, I think your gender studies professor has been smoking something. And then there's also this book of essays called Curiouser, Curiouser on the Queerness of Children, edited by Stephen Brom and Natasha Hurley. And this is a collection of essays. Um, one of them is by Catherine Bond Stockton. There's also one by Eve Sedgwick and a bunch of other big names in queer theory. At this point in time in this video, I think I need to point out to you that the word queer was not originally applied to sexuality, just like the word gay was not. In fact, for many years, the word queer meant something that was strange or unique or weird. Perhaps the main intention of that book was to be a study into the strange worlds that children seem to live in in their minds, rather than their sexuality, which is a pretty touchy subject if we're being honest here. So basically what this is talking about is the queerness of children and how queer kids are, and basically saying that all children are queer. Yes, queer is in odd or strange or unique, not queer as in gay or not in gender conforming. So Catherine Bond Stockton has these four ways that children can be queer. The first is the ghostly gay child, the second is the grown homosexual, then there's the Freudian queer child or the not yet straight child, and there's also the child queered by innocence or money. So let's just go through those real quick. Um, the first, the ghostly gay child, is basically what she talks about when people, when like gay people talk about how they always knew that they were gay. I, I totally knew that I was gay from like a, when I was like a rural little kid, but I just kind of didn't have a vocabulary for it, for it yet, and also just didn't understand it at all. Well, of course they didn't understand it. Sexuality, homosexuality, or heterosexuality is not a concept that children should or will be able to understand until they reach an age of maturity. So that's the ghost of the gay child. Then there's the grown homosexual who is the kind of projector of that idea of the ghost of the gay child. So like that's kind of just me as present projecting that notion of me as a child knowing that I was gay even though I didn't really have that concept back then. And again, the reason you didn't have that concept back then was because, again, sexuality is not a thing that develops in children until they reach a significant age of maturity, i.e. puberty. Um, she goes into it further, obviously, in the book. And then there's the third one, the child queered by Freud, or the not yet straight child. She uses Freud 
to talk about how children are all sexual and how there's basically like the ghostly straight child because um, people kind of assume that children are asexual and they're not really allowed to be sexual but Freud kind of turns that on its head and basically says no all children are sexual and yeah even if they're straight and again no children are not sexual they become sexual when they reach the age of puberty which typically starts around the age of 12 but could vary depending on the child and besides the tone at the end of your point suggests just how much you actually understand this concept and you even saying even if they are straight well I'm pretty sure straight is a sexuality as well what are you trying to imply that only gay or lesbian or bi or whatever are sexualities um so that's kind of basically the same thing as the ghostly gay child but it's the ghostly straight child then the last one is the child queered by innocence or queered by color slash money innocence is this adult construct that's kind of put onto children and it doesn't really match up with what kids are and do and she talks about that as a kind of queerness and that kind of mis mismatching of the adult ideal of children and how the idea of child itself is kind of this adult nostalgic construction. Um, and then the child queered by money or color basically talks about kids who are already kind of under umbrellas of adult queerness and how those kids don't really get that projection of innocence upon them because they are kind of the younger versions of queer adults. And so they're kind of queered by their race status or their um, economic status. So are you therefore suggesting then that there is a correlation between, say for example, children who turn out to be gay and black children or white children or Asian children or something? I really fail to see how sexuality and ethnicity go hand in hand. This is a really poor argument. I think what you may have been referring to is the fact that sexuality develops because of a mixture of nature and nurture. Scientific research has shown that it is mostly uh, to do with nurture, but a part of it is also natural as well. Okay, then there's the last one of children being queered by the economy. Kids are totally cut off from adult normative economies because they just don't contribute to it. Like a kid's, most kids' relationship with money is the weekly allowance, and I think that that makes kids really queer. And the only real way for kids to be involved in the economy is if you're an emancipated minor, which interestingly enough is not a possibility in the UK, things I didn't know before. And yeah, I think kids not really being able to be involved in kind of capitalist normative society is just contributes to their queerness. <laughs> Okay, so by that logic then, most children living in third world or underdeveloped countries would be growing up queer then, would they? Oh, give me a break. You don't know what you're talking about because you're studying a subject that is so full of BS. Just give it a break. You clearly have no idea. I will, however, give you a second grace if you can actually provide a reasonable source or statistic to back up this theory. To back up the theory that children growing up in underdeveloped countries with capitalist systems, or whatever it was he was talking about, tend to go queer. I mean, this is just a ridiculous argument. And yeah, so that's kind of the theory, the overall theory. I think it's really interesting and I kind of agree. I mean, I think if you've ever just kind of seen a kid do a weird thing, kids are totally weird. I mean, they eat their own boogers. And statistically, most kids who eat their own boogers, or most kids for that matter, turn out to be straight. So your theory is again proven to be total rubbish. So yeah, I think that just kind of puts them outside of normative society. No, it doesn't. The only person seeing them being put out of normative society because kids are acting like kids is you and your social justice warrior friends and your gender studies professors. No one else thinks like this and no one else believes this. Also, key word, you said this was a theory. A theory is something which is believed, but has yet to be proven. So, in other words, everything you said is total rubbish, until it has actually been proven by a scientist or psychologist, which it has not, and I very much believe it never will be. And doesn't and I think the fact that they don't have a voice within society is also really important to think about. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about this topic. Feel free to leave a comment below.
am I also allowed to make a response video to this? Oh wait, I just did. You can also go to vproud.tv where you can chime in on the conversation. It's a awesome video platform, totally for women, by women. Yeah, because fuck men, right? And it's troll free, so you can post your little heart away and you can not worry about the haters. Now I'm not one to ask people to go over to that website and start trolling you, but you do realise that you've just promoted this. Any trolls watching this are now bound to go over to that website and have their fun. And you know what? They have every right to do that. Of course, I'm not condoning it, but I'm not stopping them either. So, yeah. I'll see you later. Well, I'm glad that's over. Anyway, if you're still watching this video, I apologise for the crappy audio quality. I might try and work on it in the future. I'll have to invest in a better microphone or something. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to give a like, comment, or subscribe if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.